Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about Huffman coding. Huffman coding is a great way to compress data and to be able to take a large amount of data and to shrink it down to kind of bite-sized chunks. And so to give you a good example of how this works, uh, right here on the right-hand side, we have the uh, letters A, B, C, D, and E. If we had a document that only had a range of these five letters and we wanted to compress the data, uh, Huffman coding would be a great way of doing it. And the reason why is because if we wanted to store this data in the regular text format that you usually would store data, you would have to do something like this. You'd need to set up your uh, your system and each one would have to be represented by a byte and a byte is a total of 8 bits and so you're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 and so you're looking at having to take up 8 bits for every letter, but there's actually a lot better way of doing this, and that's what Huffman coding does. And this only works with specific types of data, so if you needed the full set and the full range of data, uh, this isn't something that would work for you. But what we can do is actually take it, so if we have a range sim similar to something like this, we can actually take it and instead of requiring a total of 8, I'll show you how we can do this just by using 3 bits. And uh, we're going to walk through how to do it in a tree form first, and then I'm going to show you how the actual code itself works. So the very first thing we're going to do is on the right hand side, the uh, the letter A shows that we have 24 counts of the letter A and B has 12, C, 10, etc, etc. And so uh, if you're wondering when this could actually be important, uh, there are certain studies of computer science uh, dealing with things like bioinformatics that this is absolutely critical in because you're dealing with gigantic amounts of data and you need to be able to compress it and Huffman coding is one of the best ways of doing that. Um, so the type of tree that we're going to generate is going to be a little bit different than some of the others we've seen. Uh, specifically it's going to be different than like binary trees because it's going to have values associated with them and so we're going to actually start off with the two lowest values. So we're going to give a E and then we're gonna say that there is a count of 8 and we'll draw a little box around this and we know that D is the same thing so we'll do D and we'll say there's 8 of those and then we're gonna push that up to the top and say that we know that 8 plus 8 equals 16 so we have a total count of 16 now we know by looking up at our little chart up here that B and C both have 12 and 10 respectively and so we're going to use those values as well and starting with the lower value first so we're going to start off with C we're going to start off with C being equal to its value 10 and then B equaling 12. Okay, And you notice that we are leaving out A and that's an important part and I'll show you what that means here in a second. So we have B and C, if that you total those up, those equal 22. Okay, and now all we have to do is connect these. So we have 16 plus 22, which gives us a total of 38. And now all we have to do is connect A. So we have A, which equals 24.
and then we're going to total that up so the way Huffman codes the root node doesn't actually contain any data, it just contains a, a sum of the total data we're looking for. And so we know our total, if you add up all of these right here, the total is 62. So uh, that's how you know your root node is always going to represent the, uh, the total amount. So if you're wondering how this is better than, you know, just having a uh, just a regular text file or something like that, which usually you'd use like an ASCII kind of format. ASCII, like we talked about, takes uh, 8 bits or 1 byte for each one of these items. And so that can actually take up quite a bit of space, whereas what we can do here is we can actually assign values. And so we're going to give this a value of 0, and we're going to give this a value of 1, and then uh, we're going to use this just like a regular binary tree. Right is 1, 0 is uh, on the left-hand side, so we'll do that with each one. Okay. Now, the way this will work is A is just going to be connected from the root, so the root A is going to have a value of 0. B, if you look at the way this works and you just follow the binary tree, you'll have the root going here, here, here. So you're going to be looking at B being represented by the binary value of 1, 0, 0, and then C if you follow down the tree, we're going to have 1, 0, 1. D is going to be 1, 1, 0. And E is going to be 1, 1, 1. And all we're doing is we're assigning the edges uh, on the path. We're assigning it a 1 or a 0, depending on if it's the, on the right hand or the left hand side. And then that is what we're going to store in our uh, in our compressed file. So uh, instead of having to give a total of 8 values here, we're giving a 1. Instead of 8 values here, it's 3. And the reason it's 3, it's just 1, 2, 3. Here, instead of 8, it's 3. 3 instead of 8, 3 instead of 8. So all we're really doing is we're shrinking down the number of bits that are required. And as you can see right here, to have A, B, C, D, and E, with a normal system, this would be 8 times, uh, eight times 5. So we would need a total of 40 as compared to the new system that uses the Huffman coding, which has a total of 1 plus 4 sets of 3. So we're looking at 13. So by being able to do Huffman coding, we're saving well over half of the amount of uh, space. And that's one of the big reasons why Huffman coding is so powerful, because by simply doing something, by shrinking down the number of, of bits that are necessary on a per integer or on a per uh, letter basis, uh, we're able to have a much smaller file. And uh, whether you're dealing with DNA sequences or something uh, where you can work with a data set like this, this can be a, a great way of doing it. So please let me know if you have any questions whatsoever, and I'll see you in the next video.